Hello everybody, my name is Ace Face. Welcome back to my tutorial series. This is part three where we go through the advanced military career agent. Career agents, for you guys who don't know, are just overviews of the different things you can do in EVE Online. If you are a complete beginner who does not know anything about EVE Online, I would strongly recommend to you to check out part one where I go through everything without any prior knowledge whatsoever. So let's go on with these career agents. All right, now we're going to do the advanced military career path. So these series of missions basically introduces you to some of the mechanics when it comes to PVP in EVE Online. EVE Online is known for being a very, very harsh PVP game. So the standard military career path that we did gave us a bit of an introduction to PVE. Here, it's gonna be a bit more PVP centered activities. We're still not gonna kill other players here, but it will introduce us to some of the mechanics that come into play when going facing to other players and here it says that we just need to clear the area of hostile vessels so it's not really much uh, interesting that's going to go in this in this mission right here but something i would actually want to explain to you guys that is very important when it comes to pvp is something that is very essential and really uh, forms the basis of all pvp in evil line is the security status of a of uh, systems so if we go in the map of evil line you can see here this is the map so each one of these dots represents a star system. So Uitra, the system right here, is represented by this dot right here. Okay, so the point is, in all these systems that are yellow, blue, and green, these are considered to be high sec. You can see here, it also says here, 0 0.9, 0 0.5 to 1.0, that's considered to be high sec. High sec is something that is kind of like called Care Bear Space. I spend a lot of my time in there, so I'm uh, one of those so called Care Bears. <laughs> but the point is, in high sec, you can attack people. Everywhere in EVE Online, you can attack players. There's no like uh, non PvP zones. Everywhere in EVE Online is a PvP zone. However, there are certain restrictions. So when it comes to high sec, then. You can still obviously attack people, as I said before, everywhere's a PvP zone. But the thing is, uh, the police, the Concord police, as they've called, as they are called, they will come and actually uh, kill you. They're, it's impossible to uh, not get killed by them. They like insta kill, like poof, like they die straight away. The only difference is the like the security status right here. So 0 0.5 to 1.0 is high sec. So w when you come lower and lower to 0 0.5, the, it'll take a bit of a longer time until the Concord kills you. So what people actually will do is something called. Uh, high sec ganking this is a very common activity well people often uh, have very expensive stuff in high sec because they think they're safe but then what people will do is they'll equip ships that do a very high amount of damage in a very quick amount of time and they'll basically abuse the fact that it takes a bit of time for the concord police to come and kill them to kill you and then they'll have their friends scoop your expensive modules after they've killed you so people can kill you everywhere but in high sec if you uh, get killed or if you attack someone then the concord police uh, will uh, get you it'll just take a bit of time so you can actually kill someone but it is a death sentence to attack someone in high sec uh, the only thing is uh, the point just to understand is that no way an evil line is safe it's just more safe in high sec because there's obviously going to be more, there's going to be consequences of attacking someone in high sec you're going to get killed now we finished the mission just had to kill those guys we're going back to the station to dock then this is then high sec then you see these orange systems right here these are low sec so low sec will then be 0 0.4 to 0 0.1 and you can kill anyone there it doesn't it's like there's not like the concord police are not going to get you the only thing is there is that you're going to be considered to be a criminal if you kill too many people and this will make it so that anyone can kill you without any consequences even in high sec so just that's why you can kill anyone you want in a low sec it's just that there's going to be a little bit of a consequence that you'll get a bit of a bad rep you'll be wanted so uh, you don't want to kill too many people in low sec but it, as long as you don't kill too many people then it, it's not like you anything major will happen so the point is low sec is quite dangerous compared to high sec then you see the red systems here these are null sec systems so 0, 0.0 to minus 1.0 that is a wasteland you could say of this is a 
group of systems that have absolutely no consequences killing anyone. You can kill anyone without any consequences whatsoever. The police do not see anything. And these areas also are almost always controlled by specific player alliances. So when you talk about different empires in the other line, like, oh, this, the Goon Swarm Federation or something, for example, right now, the Goon Swarm Federation, which is a very big alliance in EVE Online, uh, they actually exist in this region here called Delve. This is where they exist. And then there's all these other syst uh, systems over here. The various player alliances exist. So it's not like NPC alliances, it's player alliances that can conquer these systems. They, they can like, they can capture the system and they'll have their banner up here in the top left. You see it says Kaldari State, then you'll see their corporation or their guild's uh, logo up here. Let's complete this mission right here. Okay, so this second mission here involves you using your ship as a kind of explosive. So you're going to sacrifice your own ship to destroy this pirate base right here. And we're given a griffin here to use this. So we'll not be using our Merlin with all those modules. We don't want to waste that. We're going to have to use this griffin we give, we're given here. And actually, the only way to do this mission is using a griffin. You can't use the Merlin to get into there. So to summarize, when it comes to the security statuses of EVE Online, you got high sec, which is uh, a, a lot safer than low sec and null sec, because if you decide to attack someone, you're going to get almost insta-killed by the Concord police. Then you've got low sec, which you can kill anyone you want. The only thing is that if you kill a bit too many people, you'll become wanted. And then when it comes to null sec, you can just kill anyone you want. No consequences whatsoever. Also, one thing to know is that in low sec and null sec, you can use all capital ships. There are only some capital ships you can use in high sec, like freighters and uh, some uh, kind of mining ships. Uh, in high, in not, like, for example, the Titans and Dreadnoughts carriers, you can't use those in high sec. You can only use them in null sec and low sec. That's also something you'll encounter. In these three security statuses, then low sec, null sec, and high sec, they are what we refer to as K space or normal space. There's something else called J space or wormhole space is what they called it. Wormhole space is a kind of separate map that is off the grid. So you will notice that there's cosmic signatures here in the probe scanner. These can be scanned down, which we'll get to later in the exploration part of the, uh, the career agents. You can scan down these wormholes and wormholes are basically like portals, you could say, to different uh, systems that do not exist on the map. We refer to these systems as wormhole systems. So wormholes, many wormholes, lead to wormhole systems or what it'll say in the wormhole unknown regions of space so systems that don't exist on the map here you can't get to them via conventional gate networks the only way to get to them is through wormholes that's what you call wormhole space and they work the same way as null sec there's absolutely no consequences from killing anyone and also one oh there we go we got we got killed by going to this uh, uh station right here Let's talk back up. The thing that makes wormhole space unique is that in local, you know how you can see everyone who's in local? Well, in wormhole space, it doesn't say anything here. So this makes it this makes it extra spooky because you don't have no idea who is in the system. In other systems like null sec, low sec, high sec, you always have an idea of who is in the system, who could be out there to get you. While in your wormhole space, it's extra spooky, extra spooky because you don't know who is there. Anyone could be there and out there to get you and they'll maybe just sneak up on you when you least expect it and just wreck you so that is uh, something to keep in mind so there you've got known space or normal space which is high second low second null sec you've got wormhole space or j space as some people say which is uh, like an off the grid kind of system of solar systems and then also the third type of uh, space that exists is T space or Triglavian space. This is another uh, region of space which is called Pochavin as well. These are systems that uh, you can see here, like Krirald, Otela, all these systems in Pochavin, you can see here. These systems can also only be accessed via wormholes. The only thing is that those Triglavian uh, or these T space uh, systems they can be accessed with one another. They've got their own unique gate network that connects these systems to each other. The only thing is to be able to use this gate network, you have to have good standards with the Trigolavians. The Trigolavians are a uh, separate, uh, like an unknown species that we've discovered or we've been invading uh, the whole like normal space. 
they are like uh, it's a bit mysterious what exactly they do but to put it in uh, simple terms they are kind of like a human civilization that we have not been in contact with and they have now got their own systems here that, that can be accessed via their own gate network so you can't get there via conventional gates you have to use a wormhole to get there but then they've got when you are in triclavian space you can get around with uh, their own gates that they've got in there so the next mission seems to be to find a fling pirate captive and activate the civilian warp disruptor on him preventing an escape so we've gone over the security statuses we've got triglavian space wormhole space known space or normal space which is high sec low sec and null sec and now so that's something to get a good understanding of pvp you have these all different security statuses it affects how uh, you interact with other players because you know we're in high sec now we don't have to think much about pvp but if we're in low sec and null sec we'll have to think or in wormhole space we have to remember that you know people could you know get us they could do they could wreck us because it's very easy for them it's, and they could steal our loot that's something people do a lot piracy is a thing in eve online where you can just kill someone and take all the loot there's a 50 percent chance that if you kill someone that a module drops if someone kills me there's a 50 percent chance that this civilian warp disruptor will drop there's a 50 percent chance that this light electron blaster will drop etc i equipped now this civilian warp disruptor i got from this agent and this is one of the types of anti-warp technology or interdicting or uh, di warp disrupting technology uh, there are many different types of warp disrupting technology but to put it in simple terms you could say there's two uh, two simple types of anti-warp technology one is this warp disruptor right here so the thing with this warp disruptor right here is that it has a long range and it makes if you activate it on someone like you know i could shoot someone if i activate it on someone then it will make them not able to warp away so that's what people do to catch people in pvp so they'll find you lock you up activate their warp disruptor on you and then you won't be able to warp away then you've got something called a warp scrambler if we go here we can just see warp scrambler and if we go in the simulator i can show you actually so you see the warp scrambler over here it's got 20 kilometer range uh, the warp disruptor has got 20 kilometer range the warp scrambler has a lot shorter range 9,000 meters and even some other types have even shorter range like this one 7,500 meters the difference between warp scramblers and warp disruptors is that you could think of the uh, the warp disruptors is kind of like a long range version while the short range warp scrambler is more like a heavy anti warp technology because what it does is not only does the warp scrambler make you not able to uh, warp away it also makes you not able to use micro warp drives so remember before i was using a micro warp drive in my other merlin while i was going really fast that will not be able to be activated if i use someone uses a warp scrambler on me so that's just something uh, to understand so i activated this warp disruptor on him so he was not able to warp away but that's all you have to do to complete the mission so that's the two ways of anti-warp technology then there's also something which can only be used in nullsec called bubbles you won't really get unless you go to nullsec you won't really find this so often Bubble, bubbles or interdiction sphere launches us it basically creates a massive sphere anything in this sphere can't be you can't warp out of it also when it comes to warp disrupting and warp scrambling people refer to this as tackle like they've tackled someone so they can't move away okay let's talk to this guy here complete the mission request a new mission so now it's going to introduce us to uh, remote repair technology there's something in evil online called remote repairing and this is referred to as logi logistics or logi they are basically like healers in your typical mmo and you can see here we've got this civilian small remote shield booster we got here so uh, i equip this here and this doesn't have any skill requirements you can see here it doesn't have any skill requirements but we do as a reward get this shield emission system skill book and this is used to this skill you need it to be able to use more advanced uh, uh, remote shield repairing technologies there's also remote armor repairs there's a, like there's different types the same way there's armor tank the, and the shield tanks there's also remote shield boosting there's also remote armor repairing let's go to this mission and i think we're going to have to remote repair someone there we go there's the damaged vessel over here which we're going to repair so let's go to him lock him up and then you use this remote shield repair on him see there's zero because we're not in range this has an optimal range just like any other gun as you can see here basically it's operational once again okay so we've repaired him enough to complete the mission so we're going to dock back up a friend in need <laughs> that was a friend in need right there okay 
complete the mission, request new one. Okay, so the next mission here is another one of those suicide missions where you just take this Merlin right here that they give you and you're going to try to kill at least one ship and then I think you're going to get blown up by reinforcements that come here. The point is uh, you're going to have to experience more death. <laughs> so let's put a light electron blaster, put an antimatter charge right here. But let's just put this one MN afterburns to get a bit faster and we're going to go to the mission. In EVE Online, when you die, you obviously you lose your ship and the modules drop 50% chance they drop, like I said before. The thing is, you go into your pod when you're ejected, you know, your capsule that you've maybe seen. Uh, the capsule then can also be killed, but it's very hard to kill it because they warp very fast. Uh, so if you have implants, someone can kill you and your implants will get destroyed. Remember I plugged in this implant here, if someone destroys my pod, that will destroy, get destroyed and it does not drop, it just gets destroyed. And then you respawn at your home station. Go to the acceleration gate, go to the mission and make our stand. Yo, mercenary fighter! We're gonna get wrecked, man. <laughs> Let's get close to it. These guys are real noobs, hardly doing any shield damage. Oh, we're not doing much damage either, actually, with the single blaster. I'm so used to having those three blasters we had before. But we're gonna lose this ship, so that's why I don't want to use the, uh, the main ship we are using before. There we go, he's dead now, and oof, we've got all these people right here. <laughs> uh oh, they're gonna wreck me. No! These are cruisers, they're a lot bigger than those frigates we saw before. Spider drone has webbed me. Uh oh. Oof, <laughs> we're taking a lot of damage. Now get the hell out of there! <laughs> okay, so this is what I mean you can go in your pod, it warps very fast. If someone is quick or someone uses some kind of like smart bomb, like a big explosion bomb, then it can actually kill your body and you will lose your implants. Okay, there, complete the mission. A request for a new one. Okay, so there's some electromagnetic disturbance here. We have to just trans uh, we just have to go quickly through it. So we're going to use um, Merlin that we had with good stuff before to do this mission. Double click it to equip it. There we go. We can same to use our afterburner. We can just use the MWD. It'll be much faster. Activate the acceleration gate to get here. Let's see what this cloud is that they're talking about. Okay, yeah, this is the gas cloud they're talking about. So we have to get to the into approach the asteroid mining place. Let's just use our MWD and get here real quick. You can see here taking a bit of damage right there. Oh, good work. Now we have to just dock up. Now simple as that. Talk to the sky and complete the mission and we get some Scourge Light Missiles which are actually really crappy because they're civilian. Anything with civilian is really crappy. But we have to use this light civilian missile launcher to destroy a pirate so I guess we're going to have to use it. <laughs> Let's use this on our other other ship with all these random stuff in the highest slots. We can put that civilian light missile launcher on it. Let's use the light, light missile on this guy. Killed straight away. Oof. Start a conversation and complete the mission and request a new one. Now it seems like this is a bit of a hostage situation right here. You should use our other Merlin. You can also rename your ship by giving it a new game. So Uber Merlin, we can call that. <laughs> We're almost done with the advanced military. We're already on mission eight. The thing is like a lot of the stuff you do in PVE can translate over to PVP related combat. But I mean, there's obviously are some differences. Obviously you don't have to think so much about warp disruptors and warp scramblers in PVE because war, uh, enemies, NPCs don't usually run away while players most definitely will try to run away if they get the opportunity because obviously they don't want to lose their ship. <laughs> okay so the prison facility is over here so we can just quickly burn into this. But when I say burn I mean go with your propulsion module on. So my MWD on. Open up the cargo, grab the hostages and go back to the station to return them home. All right, mission completed. Let's request a new one. Now we're going to webify someone. Now I've already gone over webifying. It's very useful in PVE as well when you cannot hit something. So they are now asking it. PV webifies are used a lot in PVP as well because you don't want people to go too fast. We're going to have to use our civilian webify, I think, because I think that's what the mission wants you to use. Let's just put the civilian one on. I know it's annoying. Get out of here, Egger. What? Egger? He's calling me an Egger. What does that mean? No, I'm an egg. He thinks I look like an egg or something, maybe. Let's go to pirate leader and webify him a bit. Stickify him with our web, spider web. <laughs> there we go. Webified. Okay, now we just dock. That's all that is. 
always look here in the left if you're doing a mission just if it says the tick mark then that means the mission is complete talk to this guy complete the mission and now it's the last advanced military mission and we'll get a destroyer oh destroyer cormorant i prefer the corax but the cormorant is also a very good ship as well so we now have to kill a terrorist leader we can actually use our cormorant i think actually if we accept it we'll get a cormorant let's see if we can fly it. yeah i'm able to fly it yes 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 Let's see if we have any guns we can put on it because the thing is destroyers have a lot of gun slots you can see here that's why I just destroy things <laughs> we've got a lot of money now from doing all these missions so we can buy a bunch of guns you know what let's put rail guns because then we're gonna have really long range we can just try that now go on ship equipment turrets and launchers hybrid turrets small we're gonna use a hybrid turret because this has bonus to hybrid turrets Let's see now, let's find a cheap one. This one is pretty cheap. Buy seven of these guys. Okay, there we go. Bought these rail guns, put them all on here. There we go. And we've got seven turret slots and we can actually put one missile launcher here. You see there's one launcher hard point. So we, if I try to put another one on, look, it doesn't work because you, you've got seven launcher hard points and then you've got one, even though we've got eight height slots, only seven of them can be turrets and one can be a launcher. Let's buy a bunch of antimatter to give some ammo for this. 1,500 is a good enough, I think. Group them. Put the reserve ammo in here. Buy a couple of magnetic field stabilizers to give a bit of extra damage. Two of them. One, two. We can put an MWD as well to give some extra speed. Let's use this one, 5MN Quad LIF. This actually, so that you know you've got different types of modules and this one, the Quad LIF uses a bit less capacitor, so it's quite good. And then we can put some shield modules here. There we go. So we've got quite a nice range here. You can see here, nine kilometer optimal, 15 kilometer fall off. That's pretty decent. And we've got 99 DPS, a lot more than the Merlin. So we've got more range and DPS than the Merlin. Let's go and wreck these guys. And our Cormorant. Warp to location. There we go. Now we've got these terrorist leaders that we have to kill. Let's get closer with that MWD. And you're always going to see we're going to be a bit slower than the Merlin because we're in a bigger ship, obviously, so it's a bit slower. So you can see here, max speed 1.2k a second. That's the good thing about the Merlin. All those frigates, smaller ships, they're a lot fast, obviously. But we've got very good range with the Cormorant. It gets a good bonuses to the range. We can start shooting all already here. See that? He's almost dead. And we can actually... There we go. He's almost dead right now. He's using a warp scramble on us. Hmm. Oh, he's almost dead. There we go. Dead very quickly. He stood no chance against the Cormorant, the mighty Cormorant. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now we finish this mission. I'm gonna complete it. And there we go. Advanced military is completed. Military in general. All right, there we go. Advanced military done. Part three is done. Be sure to check out part four, where we go through exploration for you kind of adventurous types. You'll really want to check that out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you found it useful in some way or another, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.